What's going on smart people? Today isn't necessarily a really busy day. It's a day where I have a lot to get done. Tomorrow my classical mechanics homework is due. I haven't finished yet. And rather than stress on finishing that and then make a completely unrelated video on top of that, I figured I would merge the two together. So today's video is all on me trying to get my classical mechanics homework finished. This is not going to be a, this is how you solve these kinds of classical mechanics problems. I'm not doing that. It'll more so be just showing uh, the kinds of problems that I'm subject to solving and maybe giving some thoughts and opinions on it. I'm not too sure yet. I'm kind of winging this video. Here's a cat. <laughs> the first problem is actually kind of cool because I hadn't really considered it before. But um, you, in Lagrangian mechanics, you usually write your Lagrangian as a function of some generalized coordinate, and it's speed and maybe time, and then the associated Euler-Lagrange equations are, you know, d dt dl dq dot is equal to dl dq. Everybody knows this. This is day one stuff. Uh, the question basically says that if l instead is also a function of q, q dot, and q double dot in time, how do the Euler-Lagrange equations change? So it's a derivation problem that asks to derive a new version of the Euler-Lagrange equations that allows for effectively acceleration dependence. But I just have a tiny bit more algebra to work through with this problem and then I should be moving along. Later. Yeah, that one really wasn't all that bad. I just had to integrate by parts a bunch of times, differentiate under the integral sign, you're good to go. Um, there was barely a two and a half pager, but now on to the next problem. The next problem was actually written by my professor, so I'm not going to go into it. That way he can still like use it in in you know, subsequent classes, but it has to do with the fact that when you use Hamilton or Lagrangian formalism, you typically use it in a way to exploit the constraints so that you can reduce the dimensionality of the problem. But when you do that, sometimes you can get rid of any information that has to do with the forces of the constraints, so like tension or centrifugal force, like those little things that depend on the coordinate system. But you can recover those kinds of things by introducing Lagrange multipliers. Uh, yeah, and you, you basically add it to your Lagrangian. You add the Lagrange multiplier times that constrained force to your Lagrangian. This is getting super specific. Just take from this that if you've taken multivariable calculus and you had to use Lagrange multipliers, you can use them in a physical context once you get to classical mechanics. I remember those kids when I would be in algebra and they'd be like, when are we ever going to use this? But you can ask the exact same questions in your multivariable calculus courses or differential equations. And I definitely thought that way when I was learning Lagrange multipliers in Calc 3. Uh, they say it's good for finding maxima and minima and extreme points, but it can also be used in Lagrangian mechanics, which is kind of, it's kind of nice to know once you're taking like a math class where that will be applied in your future. But what's funny about this problem that I just solved regarding the Lagrange multipliers is this is like the third, third or fourth time this week that I've had to use the small angle approximation to solve a differential equation. So yesterday's video, it's a little too real. <laughs> now that is three problems down and only two left to go. So maybe this won't take as long as I thought it would, but knowing this class so far, granted we've only had like one or two homeworks, the last ones are going to be a doozy, so fingers crossed. And I could not have been more correct. Good lord. That fourth problem, I need to like lay down and count the ten after that one. It, it wasn't that bad. It was just a lot of things that I kept forgetting to do. But it, it, the, to tell you the problem, basically, it was like a block resting on a hoop. And it was asking you to solve the equations of motion for when the block would fall off of the hoop and at what height. So it wasn't that hard of a problem, but it was just like a lot of minor things that made it kind of difficult or kind of tedious. A lot to keep track of. I just had to draw like 30 diagrams of like, wait, am I saying theta starts from the top or from here? Like li little things like that where you really need to know exactly what the math you're writing down means. So, glad that one's over. One more problem. I'm going to go read it. It looked like a paragraph last time I looked at it, so I didn't even bother trying to understand what it was asking. But I'm going to read it, get started, and then... Almost done. 80% of the way done. Okay, the last question, it was, little thing on a hoop. Hoop is rotating. When does this thing fall off? Now, it is, here's a hoop again. Here's a little thing again. And then, plot twist, 
the hoop is rotating about some axis in like that's vertical and then it's solving for the equations of motion of this particle it's saying when this angular velocity is greater than some smaller angular velocity this point will be stationary other than at the bottom but if it's less than that value then it's the only stationary point is at the bottom find all that stuff so this one seems like it's going to be another super tedious problem Maybe it won't. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Let you know how it goes. See, that's the thing about classical mechanics. With quantum mechanics, it's like, yeah, I solved for the probability that a particle will exist with a certain energy or something like that. And the classical mechanics, it's like, yeah, that's how a coin spins. It's really not that bad. I'm just complaining to complain. I, this hasn't taken as long as I thought it would. It's, it's like, it's not even 5 p.m. yet, so I should be done by probably around 7. So... You know, ignore all the complaining. <laughs> Six o'clock on the dot now. The final question has been answered. It's kind of funny making these like next clips because I know absolutely no time has gone by for you, but a little over an hour has for me. But that's it. Classical mechanics homework is finished. It was bad, but I got all of the questions. I'm fairly confident that I got a 100. And I gotta be honest, it's kind of nice to have classical mechanics out of the way now because I still have math methods and quantum homework to do, but that's due at the beginning of next week. Today is Wednesday, so I've got plenty of time for that. So I get to relax for just a little bit. Uh, our little stand came in as I was doing my homework. We got this projector, I installed that myself, so now we actually have a stand for the projector that's right now on the couch. So I'm gonna edit this video, put the stand together, and then watch some Dragon Ball Kai. I wanna see some high quality physics jokes in the comments section, and I'll see you guys there.